Welcome back to Mummy's Biz. Today's discussion will be a continuation of our previous video on sources of energy. We will be dealing with part 2 of our video. If you haven't watched our previous video part 1, I'll put up the link in the description box. Please don't forget to watch it. In our previous video, we learned about what is a source of energy, what is a renewable source and what is a non-renewable source. We also learned what is a conventional source of energy and what is a non-conventional source of energy. Now for a quick recap on conventional source of energy. Conventional sources of energy are those which are used extensively and meet a marked portion of our energy requirement. These include fossil fuels, hydro energy, biomass energy and wind energy. So our today's discussion will be focused mainly on conventional sources of energy. To begin with, what are fossil fuels? Fossil fuels are the remains of prehistoric plants and animals which got buried deep inside the earth millions of years ago due to some natural processes. These fossil fuels are non-renewable sources of energy and cause environmental problems due to pollution. Now, how do the formation of fossil fuel take place? During its formation, an entire organism or its parts often get buried in sand or mud. These then decay and disintegrate, leaving no signs of their existence. In fact, the harder parts of the organisms after their death settle down and are covered by sediments and subjected to extreme pressure and temperature or the earth converts them into fossil fuels. The process being referred here is termed as fossilization. I repeat, during its formation, entire organ or part gets buried, then it gets decayed and disintegrated. Harder parts of the organism settle down and gets covered by sediments and gets subjected to extreme pressure and temperature. Earth converts them into fossil fuels and this process is termed as fossilation. So, what are the disadvantages of fossil fuels? Fossil fuels are non-renewable sources of energy and once used, it cannot be renewed. Burning of fossil fuels can cause air pollution. The fossil fuels reserves in the earth are limited and may get exhausted soon. What are the different fossil fuels? It includes coal, petroleum and LPG. Let's now discuss about coal and petroleum. Coal. Coal was formed millions of years ago. The plants got buried under swamps and due to high pressure and high temperature inside the earth, they were converted into coal. Coal is the highest used energy source in India. During the days of the steam engine, Coal was used in steam engine. Moreover, coal was also used as kitchen fuel before LPG was popular. Nowadays, coal is mainly being used in industries. Now coming to petroleum. Petroleum was formed millions of years ago. The animals got buried under the ocean surface and was converted into petroleum. Petroleum is the third major source of energy being used today. Petroleum products are used as automobile fuel and also in industries. Natural gas mainly comes from the oil wells and is also a main source of energy. Now coming to wind energy. When large masses of air move from one place to another, then it is referred to as wind. During this process, Kinetic energy gets associated with it which is referred to as wind energy. It can be converted into mechanical and electrical energy. Kinetic energy of wind is used in running of windmills which are used to lift water or grind grains. What are the uses of wind energy? The important uses of wind energy are as follows. 
It is used to dry windmills, water lifting pumps and floor mills. It is used to propel sailboats. It is used to fly engine fuel airplanes or gliders in the air. It is used to generate electricity which are used for various purposes like lighting or heating. What are its advantages? It is eco-friendly and renewable. What are the disadvantages? The speed of the wind is not uniform always. It needs a large area to erect a series of windmills. Big amount of investment is needed. The output is less as compared to the investment. Now let's talk about hydro energy using a hydro power plant. When the water flowing in a river is stored in a high raised dam and allowed to fall from the top of the dam, the water rushes down with a great force which can be utilized to drive large water turbine. These turbines are connected with electric generators which generate electric current. The electricity generated in this process is termed as hydroelectricity or the hydel power. In fact, the process involves transference of potential energy of the water into kinetic energy and then into electric energy. It is the most conventional renewable energy source obtained from water falling from a great height. It is clean and non-polluting source of energy. Dams are constructed to collect water flowing in high altitude river. The stored water has a lot of potential energy. When water is allowed to fall from a height, potential energy changes to kinetic energy which rotates the turbine to produce electricity. What are the advantages? It is readily and abundantly available everywhere free of cost. It is eco-friendly and does not produce any kind of environmental pollution. It is a renewable source as water itself is a renewable and inexhaustible source. It is a cheap source of energy as it does not involve any costly investment. What are the disadvantages? It is highly expensive to construct. Dams cannot be constructed on all river sites. Large areas of human habitation and agricultural fields get submerged. People face social and economical problems. Coming to the biomass. A biomass is defined as a living matter or its residue is and is a renewable source of energy. The biomass includes all the new plant growth, agriculture and forest residues, carbonaceous waste and the biodegradable effluent from industries. It is the source of conventionally used fuels that are used in our country, for example, cow dung cakes, firewood, coal, charcoal, etc. What is a biogas? It is a mixture of gases produced during decomposition of biomass in the absence of oxygen. Methane is the major component of biogas. Biogas plants, animal dung, sewage, crop residues, vegetable waste, poultry dropping, etc. are used to produce biogas in biogas plants. Composition of biogas includes methane up to 75%, carbon dioxide up to 25 percentage and traces of other gases such as nitrogen and hydrogen whereas methane is a high calorific value fuel and carbon dioxide is an inert gas what are the advantages a biogas plant is quiet simple and can easily be built in rural areas a small plant using dung from three to four heads of a cattle is capable of supplying biogas for six hours daily for cooking purposes biogas is a clean fuel that burns without smoke and leaves no ash the main constituent of biogas ethane has a higher calorific value than that of petrol the spent slurry being rich in nitrogen and phosphorus is a good manure. By using biogas, firewood is saved and deforestation is reduced. So that's all for today. We learned about conventional sources of energy in detail in today's video. We'll meet again with another video on non-conventional sources of energy. Until then, bye-bye. Please don't forget to like, share, Comment and subscribe to our channel.